So, welcome to the PRS Private Stockwood Library, which has been renamed the Vault. We call it the Vault now. And this is where um, people come in and pick out woods for their private stock instruments. Typically, there are three ways in which we get private stock guitars ordered. One, a customer will call a dealer and start getting all the specs, and, and Tina's going to talk about that in a minute. And uh, when that order is put in place, uh, David will start making the guitar, and David will start talking about that in a minute. And there's a huge amount of detail that have to be covered, and eventually the thing has to be finished, assembled, and all that's approved, and Paul Miles will talk about that at, at some point in the future. But that's when a customer comes in and specs out the guitar of their dreams, right? Mm -hmm. So the second way that we do it is the dealer will come out here and they'll come into this bowl and they'll start picking woods out and they'll pick a kit out like this with a neck blank and a headstock veneer and a fretboard and a top and a back or with an acoustic guitar they'll pick out uh, sides and backs and uh, spruce tops and neck blanks and that kind of thing and they'll pick out what they think could be the guitar of somebody's dreams and they'll order it and they'll take a chance mm -hmm. hoping some customer will fall in love with it right, right. It's very often in the beginning, the dealers fell in love with it, and the guitars never made it, right? right? And the third way is that this team of people will design a guitar and put a kit together, and then we'll take pictures of it when it's done, and we'll, dis and we'll distribute that to our reps and our distributors and our dealers, and then, then it tickles somebody's fancy, and the guitar just ends up in the store, and then it's on its way. It's, we, we're very aware that the guitar starts its journey here, does not end its journey after we ship it. So Tina, can you talk a little bit about what happens when a customer comes into a store and they've been looking at a private stock calendar and they've decided, you know, this is what they want, they saw a friend's guitar, how does it normally work? Uh, typically they'll talk over the specs with their dealer and their dealer will advise some different specs with them or work through a little bit of the bugs with them and then from there the dealer will email me all the specs. Um, if there's something that they've left out that we have a question about, we'll go back to them and say, you know, you didn't list this here, what would you like for this, here's your options, and that'll continue to go back and forth until we've gotten every specification that we need to build a guitar straight and that they're clear on everything that they want, and then we will price it, and once everyone's, there's been a go on, everybody wants to move forward, it's put in through the production line. So then what happens, David? Uh, you get the order from Tina. How does it work? Well, I'll, I'll get the order from Tina and I will look it over and occasionally there'll be uh, more details that, that didn't come up yet, in which case I'll go back and it'll be part of that back and forth between her and the, and the dealer. Uh, but if everything is, is cleared and it's all, it's all normal or understandable type stuff, uh, we come up here, we get the wood that they picked out, if they picked any out, and if they didn't pick any out, then we'll choose woods that meet the, you know, whatever they requested on their order. And typically, the, the first thing we usually do is order the fingerboard, since that's something that's often done out of house, and that takes, that takes a while. So we'll, we'll get the fingerboards together, uh, we'll write up a purchase order and, and get that moving, we'll send the fingerboards to Pearlworks, and then while that's happening, we'll start running the neck blank. Uh, there's a, you know, a lot of dry times involved with uh, the neck blanks and occasionally the tops and fretboards and stuff. So we'll get that stuff moving. And then a couple weeks later, when the fingerboard comes back, we typically have a, a neck that's ready for it. Fingerboard comes in, we glue, the, glue that onto a neck and just start moving. Then when, when we've got like a whole neck basically fretted and ready to go, uh, at that point we start running the body since that's usually just a couple days uh, to put the tops together and put the top in the back, run through the CNC and glue the neck into the body and send it, uh, you know, finish sand it, double check everything and send it on its way to Mr. Miles in the finish room for staining and finishing. So then what happens, Paul? Well, once the guitar hits stain, um, we know what color it's going to be. It's usually one of our uh, standard private stock colors. Occasionally, people will request um, a new color, um, and then w at that point, we can work up samples, and we send them to them and get approval on it. But for the most part, it's private stock colors. Uh, 
starts getting stained and grain filled and rolls down the line and at every stage uh, the guys out on the line are reading the spec sheet so that we're all clear all the way through the line uh, what the guitar gets and how it's going to look in, after it's done and you know there's always questions and ideas we may have with the guitar that may make it sound better look better uh, play better whatever and when we talk to Tina and she'll go back to the dealer or the customer and uh, and get approval back and forth so it's sort of a uh, a work in progress all the way till the guitar is done there there's always a question and um, we're always double checking and triple checking information as, as it goes down the line so that uh, even though the it's the customer's guitar their dreams um, they might not know every aspect in and out of what we're dealing with so it's nice to you know, give suggestions and, and, and try to push them or prod them along a certain path for a better instrument. But for the most part, we're reading the spec sheets and uh, and the guitar gets built to the way the customer wants. It's a lot more interactive than I think we would all wish it be because it's so time consuming. But in the end, the customers are happy with the guitar. So few guitars have come back that customers were ecstatic. And that, I think that mm -hmm. speaks to how careful you guys are paying attention to detail. Mm -hmm. All right. so. The second way is a dealer comes to the vault, like an experience that's coming up, and does exactly the same thing we talked about, except that the order and the specs were initiated by the dealer, not by the customer. Right. And the right. dealer selects all the woods for mm -hmm. that guitar themselves. And then the third way would be some of us come in this room, mm -hmm. and we'll pick out things. And we call, we're starting to call these instruments ringers, where you make something and it literally just, you just know it's gonna disappear the next day. Someone's gonna snitch it up. And for me, uh, and I carry this flag, I want it not just to be stunningly beautiful and easy to play, I want it to sound remarkable. So that's really important to this team as well. Mm -hmm. so. That's it, that's how we do it.